Shall we start? Yes, we can. Yeah, thank you. So, good evening, everyone. Those who have joined for this lecture. So, we have Dr. Amita Gupta. She is an associate professor at Lovely Professional University with demonstrated history of working in the higher education industry. Skilled in lecturing, heritage, editing conference speaking, and curriculum development, she is a strong research professional with a focused research in studies of Himalayan ancient metallurgy. She has supervised nine PhD theses till date. She has been the recipient of foreign travel grant ICHR, fo foreign travel grant INAE, Swiss Government Excellence Scholarship, Namrata Joshi Gold Medal. She has more than 19 publications till date. Her language skills include French, Sanskrit, Hindi, and English. So I welcome Dr. Amita to speak on fundamental, con fundamental concepts and paradigms of archaeological material investigation. So thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ashruti. I will take just one minute uh, because uh, my PPT is uh, just um, closed. So I will take just one minute and uh, I will start. Okay. So, uh, thank you so much for uh, giving me the chance for um, at least uh, saying something about um, archaeology as well as the material sciences. Uh, I'm going to share. Uh, just uh, tell me if my paper is shared or not. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, is it visible? Yeah, it is. Okay, do I need to make it a uh, full screen? Yeah, yeah, if it is possible. Uh, yeah, definitely it will. Okay, but um, my Microsoft team is stopped working if I'm going to put it in the mm -hmm. full screen mode. This is the problem. Can you <laughs> uh, share full screen and the entire screen and then give it a shot? Uh, no, when I'm trying to do this. Uh, now it is full screen. No, no, no. Can you please try it again? Uh, yeah, sure. Just a moment. This is much complicated for me <laughs> comparatively to Google Meet. No worries. Yeah, now it is full screen. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So thank you so much, Ashuzi and uh, Pratishta ji. Pratishta ji for inviting me for uh, this lecture on the fundamental concepts. Uh, particularly, um, we, uh, we are going to talk about the material sciences which we are, we are using in the archaeology. So uh, I'm Dr. Amita, as Ashuji told you all, um, and I'm working with the archaeometallurgy of Himalaya. And I'm dealing with the copper, iron, as well as um, gold. 
so so that we can know about the material property of these metals and basically i'm studying slag because i'm much interested in slag and technical um, ceramics not uh, in the simple uh, what we say simple ceramics which we are using at a, as a utilitarian purpose so uh, i'm not going to talk much or or i'm not going to waste much time let's start the lecture so what we are going to understand um, uh, today i i'm so sorry i have to minimize because um, if i'm going to talk in the full mood then uh, uh, what i'm seeing uh, my microsoft is stopping working so it, it's very um, complicated for me to restart yeah so thank you so uh, particularly uh, we are going to talk about the fundamental concepts and um, paradigms of archaeological material investigations and uh, within this uh, uh, the idea why we are going to talk about this why we are going to understand these things like why are we at all doing that kind of things what is the benefit of the reason for it if archaeology assumptions is so nice and has been around 200 years and does it fantastic type of job in telling us a lot about uh, the past why we we would went um, uh, went to do the material sciences like when we are going to dig something and we are taking uh, the um, uh, antiquities out and the antiquities is uh, going to tell you the things like we belongs to these things and we belongs to this custom uh, who is uh, our owner so uh, these uh, type of uh, very general questions in our mind like why we are doing with the material sciences to it now one reason is that particularly the past societies are as complex as uh, modern societies and as much as we need engineers and scientists to build our iphone or cars or whatever we want because we uh, if we are going to bury these cars iphone or the other materialistic things and we are going to dig it after a civilization then what we are going to know like who made this what is the use of this this is the iphone we know but how um, we can assume like uh, the our future generation who is going to dig us they knew this is the use of iphone or uh, this is the use of technology and uh, we have android version we have this type of wi-fi or whatever the things which is going on so uh, particularly we are uh, going to understand such type of things by by this uh, um, um, lecture so uh, the past societies is kind of the same or similar technical needs and technical aspect to, to it and uh, to understand those often from foundational aspects we need the expertise to deal with which goes beyond God, the history like um, uh, one cannot be expert in the all um, uh, specialization or um, or the all vast area of archaeology one can be expert in metallurgy but the, uh, the same person cannot be expert in biology so you you cannot expect like when you are going to um, uh, give your samples to particular metallurgist and he is going to decipher like what it is like um, uh, he's, he he cannot be able to study the dna okay so you need to understand like what type of expertise you need to understand the sample so not only today's life is complicated it it was complicated already for us another point that i'm i'm increasingly uh, getting interested to see relationship between the tangible and the intangible heritage and um, being its fluffy concept where where yes we inherited something but uh, you cannot really put your finger on it and still it it's valuable and um, it is interested and it's actually what we find in in our universities in college but rather just the material aspect of the culture which is which is normally seen as intangible heritage and uh, that um, that link sends us um, uh, all to be the conservation issues and the precious values and an important aspect 
in this particular and for the geologist and um, chemist it is it is um, necessary to realize that yes we analyze the materials now but we want to understand um, um, the particular things what is the necessity of uh, to understand the materials so what those materials were in the past you need to understand such type of things like we are using a steel so the uh, steel which have the materialistic property that was using used by the people who were living in the past actually you need to understand even uh, the expert he need to understand because he is expert in uh, particular metallurgy so um, another question uh, which is dealing like which is not necessary the same not even physically the same and it will little bit talk about the sampling why we should do it like why why we are going to take the samples we uh, recently um, uh, most of you might be have the seen the video of the snolly excavation then what is the need of that excavation why we are taking the samples of them why we are um, taking the um, um, samples from um, um, copper why we are um, um, trolling the um, um, particular chariot which we found there so you need to understand these such type of things even expert also need to understand what they are going to take for samples so how i will stress the need for a uh, cumulative science for building up the body of knowledge archaeological research is one of those research areas where you are not replacing old um, uh, particularly old knowledge with new knowledge but where you add to existing body by such expanding it and um, then of course you you revisit old um, interpretations to give new interpretations of these knowledge because you you can be sure 90% but you cannot be sure for the 100% for for um, uh, for particular things like like uh, this is a pen okay but you can be sure 90% like uh, this is a pen but who um, uh, how many people use this pen you cannot say you cannot be sure so these are the limitations with the archaeological research you need to understand because if you are uh, archaeologist uh, or you you have the history background you need to understand such type of uh, things you cannot be think like a common man so um, uh, particularly um, uh, if we are uh, talking more like where you add to the existing body by just the expanding it and then of course you revisit the old interpretations to give new interpretations of these knowledge and the fact of the old they persist and they need to be comparable or new data that needs to match the old data and that we can actually compare them and build um, on um, each um, other and um, a little bit on the pronouncing in, uh, on its origin that's why we are doing the material sciences because we are going to study scientifically what what we have actually in our hand and if we have time to do that so why material sciences we know amazingly little bit most of um, most of them uh, in the past there there are only few peoples that are spent their whole life uh, for understanding the metals which we found in india because as we know india india was amazing in the material sciences in the past and sometime um, studying that one is uh, counted star um, in now a days like like sharda srinivasan he was dealing with the bronzes of india even he got the padma shri just um, few years before so uh, like uh, chakravarti you knew the name um, of chakravarti if you are going to study the material sciences you have to uh, read his books because he explored most of the part of india and he write about the old cities he write about the iron age he write about the copper so you have to read them they are they are just like the star of archaeology and i think they both have an interest in the bronzes as well as in iron um uh, particularly in the history of india so that's why they are they are um, um, they have much interest and um, um, i think um, um, they also have the interest in the early history of india 
because uh, they want to solve the question when the bronze is came to India, when the um, iron is came to India. So uh, they uh, they can play both like a quantitative archaeology and even so they looking at how much actually survives because uh, if we are saying about Chakrabarti, so he was dealing with the theoretical perspective, like how many sites are available, but what about Sharda Srinivas? And he was dealing with the quantitative archaeology, what we have in our hand, how the bronze were make, um, uh, what type of mixing we are doing. So if you need archaeologist, you also need a particular um, um, person who is dealing with the metallurgy because uh, you, you cannot do everything. Okay, so uh, <laughs> there is one more limitation. I will tell you further, like uh, what is the expectation of archaeologist with the, these type of metallurgist or, um, or, or any biochemist or, or any other um, type of scientist. So we will talk further about that. I'm going to show you a particular one picture. And um, even uh, you can imagine uh, with this picture, like uh, here in this picture. Uh, I'm so sorry, I, I pressed and I cannot see anything. So uh, uh, I used some animation and that cannot show. It's complicated for me. Okay, you can see one of the part of this picture, and this is like a jigsaw puzzle. Okay, if you have just one of um, this part. And you are going to create a society like this, okay? Then what you will do? What what uh, you are going to talk? What um, um, you are looking into? So why I'm raising this question? Because we just know about um, one percent, and uh, um, might be 0.1 percent of a society, even a tenth less than which is not more, uh, much to put than into a context how little it is actually. And if you say oh, 0 0.1, then out of information, how many pieces are uh, there? Like, like if you imagine it is a painting and you just have the one person how how you are going to imagine this is a one percent of a painting now now the question is this how you are going to measure the things like how you are saying this is hundred percent and this is one person because you just have the one part but how can you uh, going to count this is the one part and uh, on 99 are left so this is the big question even less than um, uh, one percent if you have there there are not just random samples which would be okay if you look into something um, um, uh, statistics in the random samples the representative samples could be kind of good and with the short of something but uh, it it is not uh, random there is there is a, a massive bias in archaeological preservation what is the it that we see what we find ecologically so if you take the room here and we we can come back after a thousand years and years and we are still listening to the professors and who goes on uh, and on and on and they are just speaking and speaking and we would find a lots of bones maybe because the, the bones can belongs to me because I'm going to hear to listen myself after a thousand years okay so can you find my skin can you find my um, my clothes can you find can you recognize me like what i am looking like like can you find the cut um, on my skin no you cannot you you need to understand these type of things but um, um uh, the thing which is important like um if you found the bones, maybe my glasses you found, if you were, I'm using the specs and um, another ritual items that we carry with us. But this will only find the metal, not the connect, the material things, not the connecting pieces, not the textile, not the table. So we lose a logical and systematic 
uh, invisible, then uh, there, there is a big bias in actually what we people on X waiting and um, where are we physically at the movement. So um, particularly we are um, in India and um, just a moment, I'm just changing the slide. We are in India and for an example, if we are talking about Indus Valley civilization and uh, then it is the question from where the famous priest um, statue, if you remember, if you are remembering, remembering the Indus Valley civilization, you remembered the priest statue who is uh, holding a shawl, a beautiful shawl on the shoulder. So where he came from, where he actually exists, does he actually exist or not? This is also a question. Like it can be the imagination of a carver who is who is particularly going to make that sculpture. So what was the population of the people at that time who is living in that scenario? Because we are founding few burials, not the huge population of uh, that time, but uh, the cities are very big. Then where are those people? So what was the population people living out and there um, um, they are still living, they, they continued or uh, where they migrated? If, uh, if they are, then uh, uh, if there is the big places or um, they are just uh, attracting the attention how many people live in the cities today or worldwide population um, that is centering and you really need to read more it. And it can, um, uh, like, uh, if you are looking into your past before uh, 10 years ago, what was the situation of India as well as the other parts of the country? If you are thinking about only one country, what was the part of that country, like United Nations? And now, now what it is? So you, you have to be a critical thinker. So, um, um, particularly you can think like um, 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 if, uh, if I'm giving you the example like um, uh, China, if uh, we are looking into the ancient Chinese civilization, then there are like uh, for an example, 100 peoples are living. Just for an example, I'm not going to calculate the people. But still China is on the number one on the population. So how you are going to correlate the present population with the past population? Like uh, um, uh, if you found the body, um, uh, like the 50%, then how you are going to count this is just the 50% of the population? And uh, if uh, we are counting like um, um, uh, so many bodies we found, then how you are going to connect this? These bodies particularly belongs to this particular city, not not the other cities, because uh, there can be relatives who who came to visit the cities. Okay, so these are the faults that like you 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 cannot solve. You have to research more and more. And uh, um, uh, it can be 100 years, it can be 50 years, like you have to research. Then only then you can um, solve this type of questions, like um, there can be the, um, if we are looking into the past, there was the majority of the people, they were living in the hamlets, like villas. Somewhere they are not living much in the traces, their houses are not built from the stone, they don't know much as usual table and no, no such jewelries, no, no chairs and they became very close but again nothing survived of course. So there, there is a big fire in the discovery focused. You need to focus on the research and then further the buyer in the selection from research. Now you have uh, these big projects and you will railroad and you you train uh, a new route, a new pipelines and being built and you, you do hopefully some archaeological uh, prospection influence of that. And that's great because it, it gives you a much more representative 
and the cross section literally um, uh, the cross section of the past settlement pa patterns but again after those they select only the interesting one for the research so we see an amazing small and non representative sections of the past now we we can um, only study some of that we need to select again and um, th there is one layer of selection of the bias like what are we studying to give um, a heap of material from an excavation. So you need to understand um, the particular things. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. Um, Ashuzi, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I am here only. Uh, uh, actually, uh, I'm uh, getting some noise. Uh, yeah, I'll mute the persons. Yeah, thank you. So, um, in, uh, particularly if you found these type of things, and um, uh, why I'm saying like you can you can study um, only few things because you are expert only in one thing. If you are archaeologist, you cannot be expert in the pottery, in the metals, um, um, particularly uh, the other things as well which are available. You cannot be expert in all over things. Like I'm only studying the metallurgy. Who cares about the normal pottery? somebody else consumes all very nice pottery so there there are there are an individual bias then uh, charles needs to make sure that everyone gets treated fairly and if we take this yeah it would be very interesting that's an excellent point and uh, um, particularly refundable funding bodies themselves and uh, is driven often by their rituals and they want uh, the um, uh, fantasy researchers and one research that gets published in the public domain and attracts attention so again and again if you have uh, excavated an important uh, science and you are much more likely to get funding for it which makes it more important our history and that is going to confirming the reinforcing problem if you want to pick uh, up a small village now now you can compare the research like while i was thousand alone uh, sorry i wasted the thousand alone and that then you you can waste a million or something bigger so it's it's uh, an important point like what you are going to research you need to be very clear what you are going to study you you should be very clear like um, a few of um, uh, students I have seen in my um, life like uh, uh, what what should I study what can I study I can study anything no you cannot study anything you, you need to understand yourself like uh, um, in what area you have your interest because you are going to waste your career. So um, uh, why I'm saying this, like if you are doing a good research, if your topic is very good, it's fairly good. And um, then you are uh, getting um, like the millions of the projects. But if somebody is doing um, not very relevant area then how much funding you are going to take from uh, from the government institution from the private institution you too you should be very clear when you are going to select your topic so um uh, particularly um just a moment So, um, um, which I showed you uh, this picture, like uh, you have uh, many, um, uh, you have this jigsaw puzzle and you just have the one piece and then you are going to create the thing. Like, like within this picture, what you can observe, what you can see, like uh, uh, if there is a half of a thousand piece of the jigsaw and I invested one pound and um, uh, 39, 10 years ago and buying it from an um, from from some exhibition normally I would give each to each of you and now and uh, pieces from uh, that thing like what was the rest part of this picture 
or so into the heights of moment and i forget to bring it with you and if uh, if you get the 10 pieces of a jigsaw with 1000 pieces in term of percent how much is the one percent so 10 times as much as you see in archaeology and many have done that quite a few times now over the years with their students and of um, their tables as well and like that each with the their 10 pieces it's almost impossible to get uh, even an idea of what the picture was about once and uh, you are um, going to forgive me saying grown up now and once uh, you are in a position of teaching do that exercise is um, um, uh, quite enlightening as well as the frightening but um, if you then pull our pieces together suddenly you have 100 pieces and then oh yes then you can start talking and uh, then you can uh, see this goes here and this goes there and this one should be here and this one should be here and you are to, trying to start um, reading the pictures like the picture reading emerges but you need to pull your resources your information so that one piece which is uh, what we archaeologically see well you can put that into the electron microscope so that's why we need the material sciences like you have the archaeological picture of like for an example this jigsaw puzzle and you want to understand the materialistic character then and you are going to compare with the other pictures you you need to understand the materialistic property of uh, this puzzle then you need to use the sem or the electronic microscope as much you, as you like and um, i want to tell you about the big picture as well so the obvious answer um, is uh, no we have already bri um, um, briefly discussed just a few minutes before like what we see from the landscape from a situation like the marketplace i'm so sorry after logically what survive after thousands years like you have seen in the picture there there is a uh, particularly the marketplace and uh, pot race and uh, particularly a rich man who is um, on the horse and uh, you can also see the beautiful ladies but what will is what what is going to preserve after after thousand years this is uh, very good but plus they would survive broken but recognizable nice standard shapes so we can deal with them the the thing is that like material sciences is dealing with the with those pieces and this is stone working there you can see uh, there were um, what about the abilities in the background and uh, you can see the foundations as well so now now this is this is the assumption what you can see as i show you the jigsaw have the 1% so can you recognize the picture from this one piece no you cannot which parts would you see like if i am going to show you this jigsaw picture which part do you see can you imagine you this belongs to this part or this part or this part so you you need to read more and more what type of building ruins you can see what type of pavements you can see can you see the bones which parts would you view study you want to study or i want to study or which which part we study for for this picture for this civilization so the, these are the major question and why we are going to use the material sciences to study this picture so these are the particular question which we are going to solve uh, we we will solve uh, by the material sciences like a few um, months before you heard about like um, the uh, multi grain sludges that was used by the harappans as well which we are using these days and um, at the time of um, uh, the um, the burial ceremony of uh, our ancestors 
So how we know this? Um, uh, the Harappan civilization we have completed recently the, this year in the hundred years, and we have to wait for the hundred years to study the such type of uh, things like these uh, particular remains which we found from a site, and these particular remains belongs to these multi-grain lattus, uh, particular uh, form of the edible thing. Okay. So you need to wait, you have to um, take patience um, while de dealing with the material sciences as well. So um, um, within this picture, you, you can see the backgrounds and um, uh, you can see the big foundations and um, um, you can see uh, particularly the ladies, you can see the horse, you can see another human beings. But um, um, how you are going to deal it like after a thousand years they are going not going to survive how you are going to just recreate this civilization this scenario these customs the tangible heritage you can see but what about the intangible heritage which is here like uh, he is holding the pot like this like he is just observing it is good or not i should buy it or not so such type of things, how you are going to analyze, like he is sitting on the horse, how you will analyze he was, he was sitting in this position and he was talking to a person. So you, you cannot recreate these type of intangible heritages. So we see um, here a very good um, um, idea how many um, women women are here. And again, we see obviously there are men are here, ladies are buying pots and there were other shopkeepers as well. There is a gentleman here um, doing something delivery or some other people there were bust. But as much as women are prominent in the bigger picture being upper class as they they are um, um, uh, they will prominent in archaeological records as well and they will be the nice stone clad tomb if you are going to see after um, thousand years if they are going to die and they, they, their body is going to preserve like for an example you can see the um, um, uh, discovery of uh, these um, uh, Egyptian civilization burials. How how you can um, compare like these belongs to common man and this belongs to royal person because the burying uh, system was different from common man to royal person. So exactly the same, the upper class women or the upper class person they are going to um, clad with the with a nice grave and uh, there will be very good um, symmetry items and um, there are uh, might be some customs and they have a um, few grave goods as well and typically might be the common mans and the royal persons they have a variant in the customs but hierarchically is um, ready for you to find more important people in victims with lots of great goods which are attractive for funding bodies and research numbers the first tunes of the religions as well you are you can recreate the religion and uh, they um, but the problem the limitation with you what type of limitation when you are going to recreate the religion because they are just aliens for you how you are going to recreate the religion like they belongs to this religion when you are going to dig in archaeology. So these are like the alien graves without any great goals with the organism. And uh, they then they just want to differentiate by the position for circulation of the uh, virtuous energies with bad news for archaeology. And um, does it, it don't like the uh, brackets. And uh, so that basically what we see in which part would be studied that the course depends on our interest and now we need to do this with the material sciences but we cannot create the religion the customs that that they are following we can uh, just um, hypothesize those things like with the 50 percent with the 90 percent but we we cannot be definitely sure with the 
customs, with the rituals, with the intangible heritages of the past. And uh, what I want to stress in, uh, is that we get additional information, that we get more pieces of the jigsaw, but not just simply more because in archaeology, uh, this typically means more tune, more places and um, more temples and which is the uh, typically research buyers but um, but when we cannot do uh, we when we can do is more but different we can look into the foundations seek the economical technical foundations that was available or that was deleted from the past. And this is what I think is quite important in the archaeological sciences and not only to even better study the light population through the DNA and isotopic in the bones to see the diagnostic um, uh, places. But then we see much broader, much more complex. So here uh, these uh, lower social orders which, which are less well preserved and they are not sitting in the consumption of the sciences, they are not um, um, setting um, here, but we cannot recreate. Like still, we are thinking about the in the Harappan. The, there are um, three type or three, uh, four type of div oh, sorry, two type or three type of division. We have like uh, upper um, um, area and the middle. Like in Dhola Vira, you have you type you found th uh, three type of settings. Like upper area, middle area, and the lower area. But how you are going to recreate the society? This belongs to. Um, the common man, this belongs to the labor class, this belongs to the person uh, who, who was not counted, like the um, um, particularly which we which we say like the ST class people or the SC class people who, who was uh, were counted in their past societies. Like uh, they don't have their identities. So how you are going to count those people? So this is the big question with the archaeology. But you need to be very careful when you are studying such type of things. When you are going to dealing with the archaeology. That's why we are taking um, more and more um, um, idea with the material sciences and we are taking the help of the material sciences. I'm giving you one more example. Example uh, like this was also jigsaw for us for for uh, um, for for uh, uh, for many of the years. But after the excavation at Sonoli, this jigsaw was solved. Like um, um, uh, if we are looking into, if we are going to so in, into any societies like the big palaces and the cities and they are sitting, uh, setting in, uh, in the production sites and they actually create all of them very well and they create food, they create ceramics, they create metal, everything they create. And then they fetch top. One person is using the um, accumulator and quite helpfully uh, concentrating in uh, in their settlements for us to find. But we we have been overcome, and there there is a very strong bias in this field. Like we, um, if I am going to some site and I found many of the crucible, crucible, crucible in which we are melting uh, the metal. But what is the use? Because if um, um, they just disposed it, like they are not using uh, them anymore and they are starting using new ones, then what is the use of that particular useless item? So particularly uh, some extent write up and modify um, uh, the, um, uh, to focus on the production and the remains as, as the finished material. So. It's just a little bit more on my rent going on here, but it's these things which I would like to highlight that um, this is the antenna sod. And you see this was buried with the people who owed it um, look into the cemetery and uh, that was buried with the dead. Anyway, it was tangible, intangible heritage fact. We know the material culture and the end of the intangible heritage 
only about the 20 years ago. Uh, the UNESCO has uh, defined it as a complex thing and that includes the practices of the knowledge and skill tradition, traditional craftsmanship, and the practice concerning that um, um, concerning in the nature and it, it's exactly these three entries of uh, of somewhat long long fingers of uh, got half maybe or um, might be one one third percent on total unesco list the uh, constitutes of finished programs and um, um, particularly the constitution of the intangible heritage and it is these things in particular that we see the waste of the production process is so much of the finished program and that so it, it in the um, waste the we can reconstruct from the waste and which is more informative than the finished product and be much more plentiful and uh, see less problematic from an ethical viewpoint. To actually analyze the uh, properly and therefore a fantastic resource to reconstruct uh, the lives of past people, their material sciences has a lot to offer um, uh, complementing complementing the more traditional approaches in archaeology, just a nice picture of that and um, at the end you actually cannot see it uh, from looking at um, this lag either um, but at least it shows some practices some skills that we can retrieve through comparative archaeology and ethical archaeology so conservation heritage value will get, uh, get more more affection, more attraction. And uh, I would like to finish uh, with this. Why, why I'm showing you this antenna short? Because it became much more a jigsaw puzzle for us because we have no idea what type of use of this sort when we found it for the first time. It was looking like the some anthropomorphic thing for us. Um, we are just giving the hypothesis for this. But uh, thanks to this Sonali excavation, we found um, um, th this uh, puzzle was solved because uh, there was a handle. Uh, with the sword, we found a handle, a wooden handle, because the um, uh, the site was uh, well preserved. That's why we found the wooden handle. But uh, if the site doesn't have much oxygen, it is going to destroy because uh, you need you need to understand the chemical properties of the soil, like uh, the things which are less durable, the things which are more durable. So if there is no durability, if there are some chemical reaction, the wood is not going to preserve. That's why in other areas you didn't found the wooden handle, but in Sonali you found the well-preserved sword. So now we knew the use of this sword and we knew the culture like who was uh, um, uh, those people from where this sword was connected like because we found the similar culture here. So these type of things you you need to understand with the material sciences. That's why we, we are um, 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 understanding these type of material sciences. And I was talking about the conservation and um, um, this type of things like like the necessity uh, particularly. Uh, you, you need to understand the um, uh, ethical archaeology and the conservation heritage values and the combination of course is a moral obligation when we excavate and we destroy the site necessarily and launches the excavated and um, uh, in, in spawn and so twinely completely and carefully destructive process what we are retrieved we need to please either tangible as a physical artifact or as a knowledge as a documentation so there is nothing worse than uh, an excavation, an important site that is not published, where you have maybe a collection of bags and bags like some, um, um, even in India, I have seen this as my own personal experience. Um, people are going to dig bags and bags of the antiquity. And if you are not going to publish it, then you are ruining the archaeology because I have no idea what you found and you, even you actually don't have idea because you cannot be expertise in all the fields okay 
So you need to open uh, your antiquities for the public so that the people can understand, the people can give their own ideas, their own views. So the publication within the field of material sciences as well as in the field of archaeology is very important where you have maybe a collection of bags or the finds, uh, finds but no recording, no documentation. Where does water come from? What was the context for uh, those farmers and for too many of them for the conservation of the artifacts? Once you have artifacts, count the models, count the grounds of the, the, those particular art artifacts. And they typically often deteriorate if you are going to pack in the bags. So you, you need to understand, the, uh, you need to be very careful. And um, 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 if they are going to deteriorate, as you know, the deterioration is much faster than they were deteriorating while they were buried in under the ground. So why would that um, um, be because there is only you found in, in the form of ceramics. So why would there is only ceramics? Likely I am not really affected with the with the normal or the common ceramics, but because because of the oxygen level you can found only the ceramics but um, um, uh, the problem is this you you cannot create the intangible things which which you cannot found in those particular grounds and, and you are going to excavate the things and you you are not aware of the things from where you need to take the biological samples where from where you need to take the other th samples which are very necessary for the material science studies, you do not uh, just disturb any site because you are going to ruin a civilization, you are going to ruin a society. Because uh, um, uh, as you can see in the Sonali picture, there, there was a chemical reaction which uh, was happened with the other um, 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 sites. We didn't found the um, handle of uh, the sword, but in Sonali we found the handle of the sword. So these are these are these type of things you need to understand. If you are archaeologist, you, if you are historian, if you are the part of any excavation, you should be very aware because you have to uh, carefully document document um, um, needs a lots of craftsmanship lots of hard fact hard work only then you can um, uh, make a, or shape a particular um, um, research which you are doing like for an example um, if you are going with the metal if you are uh, going to study a metal the this study also needs a lots of craftsmanship so that you can um, give it to shape. But if you are not only looking at into, will not be able to see anything that has been asked or has it been hammered or has it been alloyed or um, um, not only those things matter tremendously to understand each passing culture and practices that can do in the conservators and that are unlikely placed for uh, that they are not and uh, just uh, graphs the important links in the academic production chains for knowledge and what else is investigated or you need to investigate and con conservation that particular tells us so much about these crops and ships and um, uh, those particularly the original production of that particular matter which was made by in uh, the time in the past of that particular object and in uh, when particular um, object was first taken place you you need to understand when it was uh, later got repaired and um, um, uh, how the repairing was done so you need to understand the material properties of um, and also the cultural properties of the modification of the particular objects so this is why you need the preservation of the material you have the understanding for a particular material 
So uh, I'm going to give you some examples for my studies as well. For, uh, that's why uh, what I was telling you, you need to understand how to analyze the past and how you can reconstruct the past. And what is particularly the actualism as a scientific principle in geology and scientific principles uh, today we were also valid we are going to valid in the past because we are using the using scientific technologies and uh, we analyze the objects as they are now okay but um, uh, they are not as they were before the burial like if you are going to some, put something into uh, the burial and you are going to dig after thousand of years they cannot be in their actual form so interpreting the data is very necessary you need to understand why the corrosion was happening corrosion was happened with the matter why the corrosion was happened with the other things and specific for archaeological and the forensic science you need to document you need to critically analyze the things you you knew um, the strategies you knew the factors of samplings like what is um, what is sampling in the form of ethics and the strategies the strategies particularly what do you want to do with the samples or what do you want to do in your research what, what you are going to understand by your research so the constraint is one is what are we allowed to do this is more complicated question like if you are going to see something in the museum and you are saying like I'm going to uh, deal with the chemical um, uh, properties with this particular sword or gold items or but you you have to be aware of your limitations as well because you are going to ruin the item because if if something you found only one in the history from the past history then you need to be very careful the constant second is what are we able to do like if you are going to asking something for the sample like give me the samples i will do but you have no idea you have your limitations so you need to be very aware what what the things you can do only then you can go uh, with the opportunistic analysis and the obligations. So the um, particularly um, you need to be very careful for, while creating the knowledge. You need to be very careful while the constructive analysis because these material sciences helps you very well in the uh, for recreating for reconstructing uh, the past. So uh, because uh, my lecture is going to finish and uh, I successfully logged in by my second laptop. So now you can see I, I just want to show you a few more remains like I, I at the time of my research uh, at the time of my PhD I, I revisited this site this was not um, um, uh, in 2019 that time I found many other interesting things I was first visited this site in 2015 and 16 that time I didn't found these type of materials which which I was trying to show in this picture but um, I think uh, this is not enough but what I want to show you here like here you can see a heap of slag like slag and slag and slag only the mountains of slag then you can see the debris debris is the particularly the waste which which the past people they don't want they just um, uh, threw their waste in the mount in the form of and they uh, they just created the mountains of their waste and we, i'm going to study this waste why i'm going to study because i want to reconstruct their technology what they were using uh, and, uh, I will take just uh, uh, one or two minutes then I will finish uh, is it allowed Ashuji? it is it is yeah thank you so what I found here I found the some pieces of um, um, uh, which was intact with the furnace and I found the advanced metal as from this place which which was not found anywhere in India so because I studies I have patience for for six years to to understand their metallurgy to understand their process 
and um, particularly I studied the past um, um, uh, literature which they mentioned like uh, the literature which was written at the time of Britishers. They mentioned a type of furnace which was um, I believe will hear and they just uh, make a sketch of that particular furnace and um, uh, this is for dealing with the iron not with the copper but the problem is this they this is the heap of the iron not not the sorry heap of the copper not the iron so how you are going to recreate the furnace when you there is the furnace is not available and this is a very advanced metallurgy in in what sense this is the three step metallurgy and what is the three steps like in the within the first step when you are going to smelt uh, the copper you are going to put uh, into the furnace and they are then you are using big quartz with it and uh, these big quartz are uh, particularly um, maintaining the heat uh, doing the work of a flux for a smelting and then the, uh, you can see the big quartz in the picture and uh, then what you found in the second step you found the um, um, particularly the size of the quartz reduces because this, this this type of slag you found in the second step and what you found in the third step in the third step you just you you, you cannot found any quartz because what they are doing actually they are just um, crushing the second step of the slag and they are just crushing again and they are just taking the metal prills of the copper prills uh, from um, the slag as well and then they are again smelting and what we found we found just a flat copper slag from uh, uh, the site so you now you can reconstruct how advanced metallurgy they were using in the past and one more question is that with this site this this is the last uh, step of slag which you found like a disc Form which is floating uh, upon the metal. So um, uh, this is the scientific study and uh, I'm not going to talk about um, those particular items. So thank you so much. Thank you Ashruji and uh, Pratishtha as well for, for this lecture. I hope um, you all heard much with patience. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Amita, for having a wonderful lecture. So, yeah, so we now, I guess, we can open the session for questionnaires or discussions. If any of the audience have any questions, they can put it in the chat box or can raise their hands to ask question directly. So we prefer to raise hands rather than uh, writing it on the chat box. So uh, if anyone have any questions, so then we can we can open the session for discussion. And Q and A. Mm, okay, nobody have the question. <laughs> I think. No. Yeah, I guess you have convinced them so nicely uh, that they don't have any questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, Okay, no, no issues might be uh, uh, it is uh, much about metallurgy and uh, I gave because I'm expert in metallurgy. That's why I gave you more and more examples from material sciences. But I hope uh, you understood what is the need of material sciences for archaeology. I hope uh, this concept is very clear in your mind. Yeah, definitely. We have a comment by Dr. Rakesh Kumar Bansal. Wonderful presentation. No need in uh, no need any questions. Oh, oh uh, yeah. so we have also one more um, comment that it was to understand so well explained. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, uh, we can please ask you a question. Yeah, or like, sure, 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 Vishnuji. Yeah. I was listening. It was first of all, I must congratulate you. You know, it was so interesting. All the slides, each one of it was uh, as interesting as the other one. So uh, you talked about um, reading debris just now in one of your slides. Yes, I yes. think uh, you cut it short due to the lack of time. Exactly. So, I was just wanting uh, to know more about that, you know, like how reading uh, the waste matters 
will help us in reconstructing the historical past, right? And in what way are we supposed to look into the matters that has been considered so-called wasted? So in that line, if you would elaborate a little yeah, more. Yeah, def definitely. Why not? Uh, Thank uh, you. I just need to share my presentation again for your more understanding. OK, um, I hope uh, it is visible to you. Yeah, it is. So I was talking about the debris. Why I said debris? Because these are the waste. Debris of what? Debris of slag. Slag is what? Slag is the waste part. When you are going to refine um, particularly ore, ore is particularly, it can be copper ore, it can be iron ore, it can be tin ore. So if you are uh, going to find a mineral, the, you have to find the ore. Then what you need to do, you need to do uh, for the procedure, procedure of smelting. Not, I'm not saying melting. You have to understand the particular things of the material sciences. You, you have to go with the smelting. And within this smelting, what? Why you are doing this smelting? Because you are, you want a metal. The pure metal, so you need to just um, um, make it pure from the impurities. So, so you, while you are going to um, uh, make it pure, you need to smelt it. And there are the smelting processes which the past smelters were doing. They are just putting. They are just um, um, particularly. They are cleaning the ore. Then they are roasting the ore. Then they are putting into the furnace and then what happened within particular temperature like the 1400 degree um, the copper or iron is smelting so they need to wait till that um, they need to wait at least one night for for getting the melted metal and then the rest part is the slag because they don't want to waste the metal in the slag so that's why in in this technology what they were doing they were just crushing crushing the man um, slag to get more and more metal pills uh, just wait so this is the first type of slag debris which which i found there the first type of slag like you 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 found a huge quantity of slag in any site it can be iron it can be copper but you need to understand by microscopically not microscopically you have to go with the terminology microscopic view you have to understand what is the slag is how it is looking uh, how dense it is, what is the uh, properties you can see by your visible eyes, how you can differentiate one slag with another slag. So um, for the example, how I differentiate these type of things for, for creating this, uh, for reconstructing this advanced metallurgy, like you have to take uh, one slag, then you need to go with the material sciences. Only then you can solve this problem, this issue. Only you, then you can uh, understand uh, or uh, reconstruct um, a technology. So it is not only dealing with the slag. I'm not just uh, giving you the example of slag. It is happening with the other uh, materials as well. Like if there is any ceramic, how you are going to uh, construct the advanced um, 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 uh, technology was happened with the normal ceramics as well. So you need to understand the material properties. If there is there is a waste, like why why you found a waste at the potter site, because uh, they they don't have any use of those things. They, they want to, to create new things. For an example, I would like now you are using Apple 13. But if I'm giving you the model of 2006, are you satisfied with that model? Are you want to go, on, uh, go with that model? No, you don't want. When they became more and more, um, uh, what to say, expert, then they just uh, leave the old models and they are going with the new things. So within the scene of uh, metal smelting what they are doing first they smelt 
okay then uh, they think no why we are wasting then they are going to market and their metal is going to on demand and it is selling and selling and selling now what they are doing they are just crushing the slag again because they left their metal prills so they won't just want to take the metal from uh, the slag as well so you can think how profitable that um, uh, profession or that business at that time then uh, and within the second time then uh, what they did they also left some metal in the slag then again they crossed the uh, slag like they don't want to left anything inside um, the slag they don't want to waste the product they just want to waste the impurities not uh, not particularly the metal or the product then they again crush and they take all the metals from the but not 100% of metal you can extract so what i found i found um, and that's why i used um, the material sciences and within the flat slag i did the sem uh, electronic microscopy and i found the metal prints as you can see in the spectrum 93 there is the remains of the copper metal and even in the spectrum 95 you can see the remains of the um uh, metal copper metal but you need to uh, um, at least zoom 100 and 100, 100 times then only you can see you can now see these things by the nude eyes that's why the material sciences is very important you need to understand the waste uh, to reconstruct the things so i hope the things are clear yeah i hope so Vishnu ji. Yes, Amita ji. Thank you so much for explaining. You know, it, it's, I mean, this is one thing that I, it got my attention and I think uh, we can always get back and then talk more about it, right? Exactly. So thank you so yeah. much, Vaan. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I just wanted to ask one simple question. So this, this uh, electron study is done through which method? Is it like a, a U-series uh, disequilibrium? Uh, exactly. Uh, this is particularly the method which you are, which the particular the machine you can say, uh, that is the name of the scanning electronic microscopy and um, then you can use your samples but you cannot directly put your sample on in this machine you need to prepare your sample while uh, putting into the machine okay then um, only then you can analyze. Do we have any other questions or comments? Ah. I don't think so. We don't. We don't have any other questions so far in the chat box. So the registration link is below. Uh, uh, those who have attended, yeah. I guess Joseph wants to ask a question. Yeah, you Joseph, unmute yourself and please ask your question. Um, I must thank uh, ma'am for her explanation. I can understand the amount of hard work that she has put in. Um, understanding, I may not have so much about this topic, but I was very uh, taken back by the amount of effort put in, not only in uh, preparing the lecture, but also in the presentation uh, with slides and etc. to uh, to bring forth this point. Uh, thank yeah, you thank so you much. And thank the organizers very much. Okay. Thank you, Joseph. So since we don't have any other questions and and we almost covered one in one hour, 15 minutes. So we can wind up the session uh, for today. And now we have the next lecture on um, on, I guess, if I'm not not wrong, on 26th. Uh, that is again Saturday itself. So Till then, uh, yeah, it's on 26. So till then, uh, please stay safe and take care of yourself. Thank you, um, uh, Dr. Amita, for attending this and sharing a wonderful lecture with us. Yeah, Thank thanks you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, thanks to you both. Thanks, Dr. Amita. Thanks for inviting. Great section. Thanks. Thank you, Tala. Thank you. <laughs>